effort is underway to defuse the situation. Well, let's stay with that story. Let's speak to Geta Chu Reda, who is a spokesman for the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, uh, the rebel forces that uh, we've been reporting are now close to the capital, Addis Ababa. Uh, thank you so much for being here on the BBC. I want to get your reaction, first of all, to what the Prime Minister has been saying in the last 24 hours, that he will bury his enemies with our blood and bones. Well, uh, we have seen this movie several times over. Uh, uh, Avi's uh, stock and trade has always been uh, vowing to bury, bury his enemies. Uh, that would include people, that would include children. Uh, this time around, uh, he's been making similar vows for uh, four months now. We have been able to reverse whatever gains he had in Tigray, and now uh, he did impose a deadly blocking on the people of Tigray, and we decided uh, to do everything within our power to make sure that that, that siege is broken. I'll come back fact, to that. We continue. To take up the I'll come back okay. to that siege. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can, I can only, I can only say that Avi is making the same vow, except that this time around, he's not going to fool anyone. Briefly on this point, briefly on this point, uh, you tweeted that the state of emergency that is imposed is cover to jail or kill Tigrayans at will. Is, you, is that what you think is happening when the government is talking about arresting friends of terrorists? Exactly. He, he, he often doesn't mean his words. In fact, his supporters have been making it abundantly clear that the state of emergency is another smokescreen to, to, to kill him jail more and more Tigrans simply because they, they come from the wrong part of the country. They have nothing to do with uh, our movement. They have nothing to do with supporting our, our, our movement. They've been uh, playing their trade, uh, doing everything they could to survive in Addis Ababa. They have been suffering in the hands of security forces. Now yep. the government, what is little left of the government, has instituted a state of emergency specifically to target Tigrans. And they have been rounding them up by their thousands, and we have every reason to suspect that people, uh, Tigrans, would get killed, some really executed here and there. We, we've seen and, the rebels. Uh, we'll have to we, every we've seen the rebels entering strategic towns uh, on their way towards the capital. Now, the U.S. special envoy uh, has been urging the rebels uh, a couple of days ago not to march on the capital. Can you give an assurance? that uh, the TPLF will not attempt to take the capital? Well, it is not a question of uh, taking the capital. We're not particularly interested in uh, marching on the capital for the sake of uh, seizing power. We are not interested in territorial ambitions. Our interest and our only objective is to make sure that Avi does not continue to threaten our people anymore. If marching on Addis is, going to, is what it takes to make sure the threat from Abi is neutralised, and then we will. So I just the line was difficult to uh, uh, to be clear on that. Uh, were you saying that you will potentially go into the capital, or, or you give the assurance that you won't? We will potentially enter the capital. For us, marching on the capital is not about taking over Addis Ababa and taking seizing power. It is about making sure that Abi's threat of continued genocide on the people of Tigray doesn't exist anymore. So you, you say that, that though. Exists, you say that as you say that as justification. But uh, the problem here is the prime minister already has urged people call them to arms. If your fighters enter the capital as well, there is huge potential for terrible consequences. Is there not? Look, Abi has been calling on people to carry machetes and fight our our forces, despite uh, repeated efforts uh, by him to send human waves after waves, we have managed to, to target the ENDF, the regular army units, and spare uh, the helpless uh, civilians who have been press-ganged into fighting and, and a war that, is, that doesn't belong to them, and will continue to take appropriate measures to avoid the kind of uh, carnage and bloodshed that he is trying to visit upon you, the people. You say Ethiopia. that and, of course, blame the government, but only yesterday the UN High Commission for Human Rights reported potential war crimes on both sides in this conflict. Do you accept your part, your culpability, for some horrendous crimes that have been committed over the last 12 months? Look, while we have always been uh, clear on our position to, 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 
to agree on uh, an independent investigation for anything that, on any allegation that could be flung against us. We categorically reject the so-called finding of UN, uh, the, the UN Human Rights Commission because it was done with an institution, an Ethiopian institution that was particularly interested in what, why it's watching the crimes of Abiy Ahmed. Otherwise, we are open for independent investigation. Let me ask you about the humanitarian situation because uh, uh, the UN have been reporting that uh, no new aid has been able to get into Tigray since uh, October the 18th when the government resumed their airstrikes. But as well as what the government is doing, uh, with your push to the south, uh, the insecurity has also hampered the delivery of aid to thousands of people. Uh, can you give any assurances on that, on the humanitarian side, that uh, what you are doing yes. is not making the situation worse? In fact, you know, let me tell you this. Uh, we, when we took over Kombolcha, uh, we found out that uh, there is a significant uh, amount of uh, food aid in warehouses that belong to WFP, uh, OCHA, CRS, and all those uh, humanitarian agencies. So the first order of business for us was to make sure that this, this warehouse are secure, and we have communicated OCHA and other humanitarian agencies to, to resume their aid activities. And we'll do, extend whatever support is necessary to make sure that these uh, UN agencies continue to carry out their, their, their activities as, as, as uh, peacefully and as smoothly as, as they can. So, yes, we will give assurances that they can continue to carry out their work unhindered. And, of course, we owe it to our people to make sure that there is, in fact, this unfettered access to humanitarian aid that has been hampered by the government of Abiy Ahmed. Well, we have to leave it there. But uh, thanks very much uh, for joining us here on BBC World News. Uh, thank you for your time. My pleasure.